may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we continue to worship him in our spirit, continuing to be mindful of how we hear. That we would listen by faith. Amen. Thank you, Father. You've been so good to us. We cannot tell it all. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ooh-wee. If you'll turn with me in the Holy Scriptures, being ever so mindful of the what it took for us to have the Holy Bible in English. Mm-hmm. I'm mindful to the Apostle to Burma. Uh, he had to lay his life down that they might have the Holy Scriptures in Burmese. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Titus chapter 2. Verse 11. For the grace of God. I thought somebody would have shouted right there. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men Thank you. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works Amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. now <clears throat> I'm yet before the Lord in this matter of grace and after we Sunday school the Holy Bible how to benefit from the fantastic things of Christ and understand the hard sayings of Paul. With Christ, it's an honest and good heart. With Paul, it is due consideration. And we like to look, I like to call it fantastic grace for today. And we want to give it due consideration. Right. Seeing that Paul had so many hard things to say. Now, if you allow me to draw your attention again to the seven aspects of God's grace, I want to talk to you a little bit about grace has a call. Has a call. Amen. Now, uh, this call of grace is so uh, fantastic, if you please. And when it expresses itself, is powerful, awesome, that it takes a revelation from the Almighty God to, be, to begin to appreciate it. Now, I find myself not appreciating the grace of God as I should because Paul says some very fantastic things about the grace of God. Now, I looked up that word fantastic. And it gives you the inclination that it goes beyond what humans could ever think could be possible. All right. It's something that humans would never even think could happen. All right. But yet, that's why they use the word fantastic. They say, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> so we've taken that word 
and looked at the things that Jesus said to us and the hard things that Paul said and uh, we just put them on the category of fantastic. They're otherworldly. They're not of this world. Amen. Now, the call of grace is a call to a new life. Amen. A new way to live. Amen. A new way to experience. Hallelujah. It's something that we never ever thought could be possible. And it's going to take a revelation from God for us to appreciate the call of grace. Amen. Most people think it's just, um, the world think it's just to say your grace when you eat. And most of the church think it's just primarily to be born again. Yes, that is the sanctifying reality of grace. But it's much, much more than that. It's, it's under the category of fantastic, awesome, unbelievable. And this call of grace is to call us to live by grace. To become what we are by grace. To grow in grace. To grow with the divine influence upon our heart that's reflected in the life, including... Uh, acceptance, uh, gratitude, benefits, and favor, okay? It's a, it's a call to go into another world that we never even imagined was even possible. We'd be like the man that the king's hand leaned on. He said the wonders of heaven was to open up. Right. Nothing such as this could be possible. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, the call of grace is for us to let God have complete divine influence over our heart to such a degree that it is established by grace. Amen. You see? I see it. And believers such as myself that um, don't give due consideration to what Paul say, has said in the scriptures, I miss that call. I think it's a call to gain more knowledge. I think it's a call to know more about Greek. I think it's a call to do more work. But it already said that we were created. That's our default. See, when we walk in the grace life, our default is that we're zealous for good works. Let me read it to you right there. Mm -hmm. Teaching us. Oh, okay, and uh, us that deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously in this present world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who gave himself for us? Now, uh, when when people such as me get born again, um, we automatically assume that. I've been born by grace and that's all it is to it. I've been saved by grace. Now I need to go out and do something for God. Right. But the scripture says here, right. glory to God, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Isn't that fantastic? fantastic. Now that's hard to believe. All right. all. But it's fantastic. Sure. Glory to God. Forever. When the last time you thank God for redeeming us from all iniquity? Oh, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't even believe that. If you go tell somebody, I've been redeemed from all iniquity, they say, shut up. Slap him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. And pure. And, and purify. Oh, unto himself mm -hmm. a peculiar people zealous of good works. Amen. Now, those are not dead works. Our default is that when we're walking in the grace life, amen, we're zealous for good works. Hallelujah. We get up thinking about good works. We're zealous for it. 
We don't need no outside influence. Grace works from the inside out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God begin to work in us. So I'm going to get up. I'm, I want to be zealous for good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, it's just like he, when he worked in our human spirit and joined it to his spirit. Glory to God. And when the grace of God got to working uh, with God. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 we were delivered from sin. Amen. And our default is that when we get up in the morning, we don't get up thinking about what, what kind of sin am I going to do today? All right. Thank you. How am I going to be weak today? All right. What is my plan to create and invent an evil today? My feet are not going to be looking to run for evil. No. When God got through the human spirit, we get up every day saying, how can I fulfill the good pleasure of God? Right. How am I going to live the righteous life today? Glory to God. Amen. Now, isn't that fantastic? That's hard to believe. And I tell people all the time that you're not the originator of sin. You're not. You see? What do you mean I'm not the originator of sin? I say, when God got through with our human spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah. and he regenerated it, and he uh, 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 separated it from sin, amen, by crucifying the old man that made sin unemployed so he didn't have a partner anymore, and, and, and judge sin and put it in the confines of the flesh so that it can no longer have ruler over all our person. It must now try to influence us from its headquarters in the flesh. flesh all right. You see? So in man's person, there's two nations, two natures, but we only got one nature. Amen. Okay? So, uh, 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 many believers don't know that when the grace of God got through with us, hallelujah, hallelujah, that our default is that we don't think about sin. See how y'all looking at me? See how fantastic that is? What you mean we don't never think about sin? We got the nature of God. Do God think about sin? All right. We got the same nature he has. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You say, well, why do I still keep sinning? Well, because the immaturity of, of some of us like me and, and the years it takes uh, uh, for not considering what Paul has said because he says some things that are hard to be understood. You find yourself uh, walking in the carnality of your mind and yielding your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin. Hallelujah, which is your mind. Amen. And didn't you read what Paul said when he said, sin deceived me and by it slew me? All right, that's what he said. Then you read what Paul says some hard things that sin wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. What does that mean? That means that uh, you can't rehab sin. You can't, rehab. you can't train sin. Sin, we're talking about not uh, 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 adultery, lying, or stealing. We're talking about whatever happened to Adam when he took the fruit from his woman's hand. Something happened in him. A power came in him uh, that many believers like me like to say it's a sin nature. I had the nature of a child of wrath. And this nature was always wanting to sin. Hallelujah. But God came and saved us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. He made us not be a, a slave to sin any longer. Amen. So that now we can get up, have our will free. We can do uh, whatever the Spirit of God tells us to do all day long. Hallelujah. But if a believer don't know that, he'll be keep thinking that that's him thinking all that stuff. Look, Paul says some hard things. Now, see if you can catch this. Paul said, if I do that which I would not, then it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now that's a hard saying. But when you get it, it's going to be a fantastic saying. What is Paul saying? Paul said, if I do that what I would not, he said, in other words, I agree with God that what I'm doing is wrong. So that means me and God are in agreement. All right. All right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> then, then the question comes to me that Paul was saying, then, who is it in me that's in disagreement with God? Paul said, it's sin. <laughs> sin working in me. And I like to explain to believers like this. Sin gets up, when you get up, it's waiting on you at your bed. Say, listen, I got everything you need today. What's your flavor? I got it for you. What you want to do? Here it is. 
And, and, and I used to go up to the elder and say, oh, y'all please cast this demon out of me. Oh, get him out now. Because I said, I'm still thinking about sin. Hallelujah. And I didn't know. What Paul has said that was so hard, but when I got it, I went from, 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 from it being a hard saying to a fantastic saying. Right. Otherworldly. It's hard for believers to believe that God gave them a nature that's set on default that they don't sin. Amen. What I mean by that is that you have to always be tricked. Paul said, sin deceived me. Right. Read it in your Bible. You read it, you won't even believe it. And by it slew me and brought me back under its control again. Isn't that fantastic to know that it's not me? I, I, isn't that fantastic to know that it's no longer I, but sin that dwells in me? You say, well, who is it that picked up the cupcake? Well, it was me that picked the cupcake up after I yielded my member as an instrument of a righteous under sin. Then it becomes my responsibility then because I yielded it my members. So now it's my responsibility when I get the cupcake and God said don't eat it, then I have to go back to the throne of grace, get some forgiveness, and go back and learn some more that when sin is talking to me, that I don't listen to sin. I reckon myself indeed to be dead under sin. Not by saying it repetitively, but having a revelation of it. Now, I said all that to say this. We're not going to never come to that type of understanding until we get a revelation of the call of grace. Amen. The call of grace is to call us out of that old thinking and to bring us into a new lifestyle Amen. where all the benefits Amen. favor. What are the benefits? God gave you a new character. You. Hallelujah. He gives you a fruit of the spirit to give you a new character so that you don't have to keep uh, going back and putting on the old man so you can do something, act like something you're not. Hallelujah. He gives us new skills. He gives us the gifts of the spirit. All kind of gifts to do the work that God has called us to do. Fantastic gifts. Gifts beyond understanding. Gifts so uh, unbelievable that all we can do is put it up on the category of fantastic because we can't separate it from what God said. All right, amen. He gives us a new personality. Christ is our personality now. Amen. Christ is our patience. Christ is our long suffering. Amen. This is the call of grace. <laughs> Glory to God. Many years I'm looking how to be patient until I got the revelation of grace. Hallelujah. What God did. Glory to God. Now, not only did he save me, but he gave me his character. Hallelujah. I can be patient. I can have love in there. Glory to God. Okay, now, I haven't said all that. Let me see if I can read this. See, grace has a call. And this call is to bring us into a fantastic lifestyle that the grace of God sustains us for everything we need. Now, the, now, what most believers such as me do, when I read this book, hallelujah, I, 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 I already assume that I understand what grace is. All right. Okay. Never have it ever appeared to me that grace has a call and an expectation. And a manifestation. Oh, glory to God. Now, remember that grace is divine influence upon the heart and the reflection of the life. Now, but this is what else I want you to remember. That the exact and discriminate meaning of the word of grace should be crystal clear to every child of God. Every child of God. Okay. Every child of God. Because the grace is so fantastic, to not understand it would be, if it, if it, it, it would almost be just a, a sheer foolishness to walk around and not know the crystal clearness of the call of the grace of God. It's out of this world. It's something that God has brought to our understanding to help us to live the overcoming life. But how many believers sit down and think on grace four, five, six, seven, eight hours till you get it? You get it, all right. Keep going till you get it. See, it's, 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 we should meditate on it until the exact and discriminate meaning of the word of grace should be crystal clear to every child of God. Amen. 
Okay, now this is why. With such insight, With such insight that you gain, all right, that you gain by considering the call of grace on our lives. Oh, Amen. 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 What is this call? Hallelujah. With such insight, only, can we say only? Only. Did you get that? Only. With, with this insight, only, only. Jesus is Lord. Forever. Can he or she feed his own soul? You see, the, the, the call of grace is to supply everything that's needed. Amen. It's the call to a fantastic life that is otherworldly, if I can say that term. But many of us, if we don't give due consideration to the hard things that Paul said, it will escape our understanding. And we'll find ourselves with some insight from some other type of philosophy, religion, or, or, or taboo saying, trying to accomplish what only the grace of God can accomplish. All right, you all right, talk to me. See, only with this insight. Only, amen. Can a believer feed their own soul on the inexhaustible riches. Inexhaustible. Now my time is running, but I, I like to say that you're looking at a saint that is fundamentally poor. Why? Because I, I've been living day to day by the um, by the, the the everyday grace of God, if you please. Always crying out for grace for this, grace for this, grace for that. Hallelujah. Never living out of the riches of his grace. Living from mouth to you know, paycheck to paycheck. From grace to grace. Always got to have some emergency grace for this. Emergency grace for this. SOS. God needs some grace for this. Don't have any revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Of the sustaining grace. Glory to God. The sustaining grace means that I got enough understanding of grace that I can reach down into the riches of grace, hallelujah, and get what's needed to continue on to be an overcomer in this dispensation. Every day. I can't preach unless I have inspiration. Amen. Don't have any sustaining grace from the experience I've had with the Lord, with the revelation I had of grace, that I can get up here and speak, hallelujah, not having to say, well, the Holy Ghost said to me last night. If the Holy Ghost haven't said nothing to me in the last 40 years, that I got to get up here and preface and say it, he said it. I, when you come to super grace status, when you come to understand the grace of God, God can do something fantastic in us. We can say, that I've been taught by grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. I do believe that God has did a work in my human spirit and I can, I can say not the Lord is saying but I am saying. Got enough grace. So I'm rich in grace. But saints like me just won't sit down and humble themselves. We're too arrogant. Oh, God save us. Arrogant is not a bad word. It's a bad way to live before God. It takes God to show us how arrogant we are. And here cutting the rug and strutting everything and we poor. Don't have enough grace for this to make it to tomorrow. We should be rich <laughs> in grace. But grace should be so precious enough that we should be multiplying grace. How can I increase grace? How can I get strong in grace? Uh, we don't even know the difference between the grace of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the spirit of grace. Amen. Then with time we call somebody up like me, well, Bishop, can you, can you, can you give me a week? A week? You mean you don't have enough grace to get up and talk 10 minutes for God? See, Paul had, had matriculated and, and, and become rich in grace to the degree that even if God didn't inspire him to say something, he at least could say, listen, I speak this by commandment, <laughs> not by the commandment of the Lord, but I say, I believe I have the spirit. And so I give my revelation and my understanding on this matter. All right. You see? Yes. We don't have to every day say, well, I got a fresh revelation yesterday. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost said unto me yesterday. Uh, what did the Holy Ghost say to you last year? Mm 
Do you, you haven't matriculated in grace long enough to know that you can get up and say, uh, 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 I say, but not the Lord, but I do say. See, that I do have the spirit. Hallelujah. See, that's called sustaining grace. That's called being rich in his grace so that you can speak. Hallelujah. Like God taught you without you having to always say, I had to get emergency grace yesterday to even get up there and talk. That's why we got to humble ourselves. Amen. We quit being arrogant. Amen. People get mad when I say you're arrogant. Well, if I get said I'm arrogant, you know I'm going to say you are. All right. <laughs> All right. Talk to me. <laughs> Boy, when you get to looking at arrogant, you say that's me. And you go fall on, go to the throne of grace. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I said it as clear as I can. I can't say it any clearer. My time has come and gone. But we need to be rich in grace and not poor. Amen. There's too many poor saints that don't have poor in grace. They've got just enough grace to get a meal tomorrow. Just enough grace to stand up and say the Holy Ghost say it. It should already be unconscious in us because of the work of grace and the experience we have that we can say, uh, 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 now I speak this not by the command, but, uh, 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 but I say. Amen. Oh, that's the riches of his grace. When you can say, I say, amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.